On today's Locked On Senators, Milestone Watch is on as we hit the stretch drive of the regular season. And we have a Sen Central citizen today. It's Mark Hamad. We'll get into all that plus a little 2024 NHL draft talk on today's edition of the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Jake Sanderson, and you're listening to Locked On Senators Podcast. I'm Tim Stützle, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators Podcast. Welcome inside episode 1010 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan, soaking in the sun in Scottsdale alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first ticketing purchase. That's code Locked On with Game Time for $20 off your first purchase. You can also follow the show on social media. We're at Send Central on Twitter, LockedOn.Senators on Instagram. The show is free and available on all podcast platforms, including on YouTube, where we say hello and let you know that a like, comment, and subscription go a long way to helping the show grow. Today is Tuesday, March 26th, and Pilsy, the Sens are about to begin a three in four at Buffalo, home to Chicago, and then we will be boots on the ground this Saturday in Winnipeg. What are you hoping to see these final 12 games of the regular season? While Ross goes without saying, I'm hoping to see the Sens get wins for the games. We have boots on the ground in Winnipeg, in Minnesota, and then the home closer up against the Montreal Canadiens later on. But mostly, you just want to see the attention to detail, right? And that's why Jacques Martin was brought in to try to clean up some of the the miss attention to detail that was going on with this team and with a young group of guys you have to have that kind of focus that kind of preparation so that you can continue to have those results which we saw last weekend sure the game up against the Edmonton Oilers as Jacob Chickren put it wasn't exactly a Picasso performance but they were able to get the job done and uh, offensively they were doing a lot better and they were doing things uh, much more efficiently than we saw them do most of this season here. So just want to see them pay attention to the details and uh, hey, a couple extra wins, although it hurts the tank, it's it's good for morale and it's nice to finish off the season with some uh, some vibe casts for us. The- the tank is getting squeezed, though. We know that they're going to finish anywhere between fourth and seventh in the NHL draft lottery, barring something miraculous one way or, or another. They, <laughs> they ain't catching the Seattle Kraken and Pittsburgh Penguins. I truly don't believe that. We already talked on yesterday's show. They ain't catching San Jose, Chicago, or Anaheim. the uh, Anaheim Ducks either. So they're kind of in this this sticky situation where you're only looking at the Montreal Canadiens, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. And if you look on paper, the Ottawa Senators should, keyword should, be the best of those four teams. Yes. So if they're seventh, we'll talk later in the episode. Scott Wheeler's latest draft rankings are out, so we'll get into what players could be available in that standpoint when the NHL draft lottery will take place and a whole lot more tank watch and all that. But... I think right now it's it's about milestones. It's about having players feeling good leaving this season and saying, okay, at least we were able to accomplish some things individually, and next year let's make sure that these meaningful games in November, which the Senators still haven't been able to get past that hurdle, will make for a better overall season for not only the team, but for them as individuals on top of that. Now, the number one milestone that I'm watching for is Brady Kachuk because it had been such a consistent climb for him in terms of goal scoring over the last couple of years. He was in that 20 range for two seasons as a teenager. Then he comes into the COVID season, gets 17, which on pace would be about 28, 27. Then in the last two years, 30 and then 35. So naturally we're like, can he hit 40 this year? Not the case, but as it stands right now, Brady Kachuk, the goals leader for the senators with 31, he needs five more goals in 12 games to set a new career high. I say he does it. What say you? 
Yeah, I think you can get it done, uh, Ross. And we've seen this team uh, is able to put a lot of effort into helping Brady hit those milestones at the end of the season. We've seen that before. So maybe that'll happen again this year. But there's a lot of other players that are looking for milestones as well. Uh, let's go to Claude Giroux here as we've got a couple from him. And I think Claude Giroux is the guy we got to mention because some of the milestones we're talking about are pretty impressive here. Drew needs 10 more points to move from 76th to 69th on the all-time NHL points list. So that would be quite a jump for Claude Drew if he's able to get 10 more points here. So hopefully he can do that. Sticking with Claude, one more goal for him, and this will be his 11th 20-goal season. You got to think that's going to happen there. And then Drew is also two goals away from 350 in his career. So some big numbers for Claude coming up. And big names that he would pass. So he's one point from Pat Verbeek in the all-time points list, two from Eric Stahl, two from Joe Mullen, three from Ray Whitney, and guess what? He's four away from Keith Kachuk. Nice. Others in this span, Dave Taylor and Henrik Sedin. So these are some big names and to move into the top 70 of all-time NHL scores. He's also right now tied in assists with Daniel Alfredson, for the, I think he's in the 70s here. Yes, he is. No, 713 assists tied for 55th right now. So his next assist, he will pass Daniel Alfredson in like 60 last game. So an impressive wow. career for Claude Giroux that's still rolling strong. Like oh, yeah. that Joe Pavelski model, you got to think if he can continue being the smartest player on the ice most nights, he's going to be able to play well into his 40s. And Claude Giroux at 36, having uh, just a remarkable start two years to his time with the Ottawa Senators, averaging a higher points per game than he did with the Philadelphia Flyers. Just unbelievable. So yeah, we'll always be tracking Claude Giroux. Now, I think when we, when we turn our attention to, down this list a little bit more. The next one that really kind of excites me and gets me fired up is Jake Sanderson, who I think a lot of people forget is still 21 years old around the league. Of course, Sens fans are well aware of uh, the, the fact that he's playing these huge minutes at such a young age, but Jake Sanderson's next point will tie what he completed last season. And he's missed three games this year. So last year, he did it in 77 games, 32 points, only four goals. This year, he already has eight goals and in 67 games, 31 points. So, Well, and Ross, just to jump in quickly about the goal scoring, at the start of the year, I believe Mendes had an article where he talked to Sanderson about his offseason and Sandy said, look, obviously playing defensively in the NHL is tough to do as a young defenseman, but I think I've got a little bit more to give offensively. And I'm forgetting it's – blanking my mind right now which players there was two players that he watched um a lot of off-season tape on i want to say it was like roman yossi and uh maybe like Kale brent McCarr. burns or someone oh was it Kale, Kale McCarr? but there's players that he watched and he was like these guys are able to score goals at a much better rate than i am i want to learn how to do that and work towards doing that more and one of the things he mentioned is that he needs to get in better shooting lanes and get closer to the net when he's taking his shots and I think he's done a good job of that. And we've seen that result in a couple extra goals for uh, Jake the Snake here. Yeah, and uh, six even strength goals. Last year, he had two power yeah. play goals. He's got two power play goals this year. You might want a couple more power play goals all around with the Ottawa Senators this season. But very yeah. impressive. Three combined power play goals between the third and fifth overall pick, uh, Timmy and Jake. Let's We got to get those numbers up. Got to pump those numbers up. Uh, Eric Branstrom will tie his career high in points with his next one. He's already got a career high with three goals, beating two, which he set Huge. in two separate seasons. Um, Artem Zub over the weekend hit a career high in points. He's got 23 points this season, and he also missed a ton of games too. So credit to him there. And um, Parker Kelly's next goal will also set a career high for him. Now, um, Matthew Joseph, three goals away from a career high. And, Finally, Jacob Chikrin, eight points away. I don't know if he does that, but one thing we can give stick taps to Jacob Chikrin for is over the weekend, he passed his all-time most games played in a single season. Previously, it had been at 68. He played both games over the weekend. He's 70 for 70 this year. And look, there's been some flack heading his way this year. Um, the ability to stay healthy, very impressive. After that was like the main caution signal that they were getting this injury-riddled, Guy who can't stay healthy, 
70 for 70 this year for Jacob Chikrin. Has not missed a game since coming to Ottawa, even down the stretch last year. Yeah, that's definitely been good for Jacob Chikrin. And we saw him get back to his goal-scoring ways with two power play goals uh, the other night up against the Edmonton Oilers. So let's hope he can continue on that pace because uh, defensively, I would say definitely he's uh, regressed from what we saw and hoped he could be. But if he can try to balance that out with popping in or chipping in more offensively, that could do him some real good here. I agree, Pelzi. Well, let's get to our Send Central Citizen today, and then we'll wrap up the show with a little NHL draft talk. I know, I know, but we did update the top 10 following Scott Wheeler's most recent draft ranking. So that's all coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators. It's your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Mary J's. Mary J's is a locally owned cannabis dispensary in the Ottawa area. Started off with Dashy and two of his buddies making a life-changing decision. And through hard work and dedication, they now have four stores in the Ottawa area. The Ottawa locations are Riverside South, Orleans, Greeley, and Russell. They got plenty of spots to help you out. And they offer the best and newest products in the market. They're adding new stuff to the menu every single week to keep it fresh. They got everything you need, whether you're a rookie looking to try things or you're a grizzled vet that knows what you want and you want to be in and out of there quick. They got you. They got competitive pricing. In fact, they're going to price match any store in Ottawa. That means you're guaranteed to get the best price around at a Mary J's location. And they got friendly customer service with bud tenders who are always ready to help. One of the owners, Dashy, you guys know him. He was a Sens Central citizen, absolute beauty. He's a diehard Sens fan. So go to one of their four stores, say what up to Dashy, and pick his brain about the Sens and all the great products that Mary J's has to offer. Check it out today, guys. Mary J's Dispensary. Today's episode is also brought to you by Sleeper. Look, it's almost the end of the Ottawa Senators season. Mercifully, some would say. But regardless of where we are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can still win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper's our number one choice for Daily Fantasy sports, especially hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win up to 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. Fans can also play Daily Fantasy in other sports, but all you have to do is pick winners. Studs like Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutz, like Clojure, Jake Sanderson, others who are hitting milestones, and whether or not they will record more or less than their sleeper projections for seven stat categories like goals, assists, plus minus, saves, and more. To win 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Sense fans. You can win big 100 times your money potentially by having daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks, and win big. Use promo code Locked On NHL, and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Locked On NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Now, here's our Send Central citizen. It's Mark Hamad. All right. We now welcome on this week's Send Central Citizen. It's Mark Hamad, and he's already made me jealous, saying that he can go right into the food court at Carlton and get his shawarma palace. Mark, welcome to Locked On Senators. How are you doing today, sir? Doing well, guys. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Really appreciate having you. And for those who aren't aware, Mark is a postcast regular, and we love that he took it upon himself to get us the statistics of the postcast. Is that something that you're always been into, all the numbers and everything? Yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm a numbers guy. I like to play fantasy sports and look at the stats for as long as I remember. I'm in, I'm in your, your league, Russ. So, (laughs) <laughs> in the semifinals right now, hoping to, hoping to go all the way. I don't want to talk about it, Mark. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It's a tough year for me. Yeah, just, just just missed, just barely missed. But yeah, I've always been a numbers guy, and I like to, to give people that, that next level of data to see, get some stories for you. 
Yeah, and it's interesting for the postcast because there's so many different kind of variables, uh, which of me, Ross, Martian, and uh, other guests we've had on have been on, how those records are, and you laid it all out nicely. Uh, did that take you a long time to do? I'm not a computer guy myself, so I imagine this would take me like days to do, but uh, <laughs> a guy like you who's pretty good with it, how long did this take you to compile all this data? It took me like a couple of hours, honestly, in like an afternoon just scrolling through uh, Spotify, checking each each one. And yeah, Pilsy, I see you, you and Martian, the only guys over 500, only Which regulars. Which is so surprising because <laughs> it feels like Martian and I are always talking about losses. Exactly, yeah. So it was kind of fun to see, like, I know that was kind of like the narrative and then yep. found, oh, it looks like you guys started like 10 and 0 or like 10 and 1, kind of carried you through. Like yeah. the Sens, opposite of the Sens, right? <laughs> exactly and if people aren't watching on youtube uh mark has even set up all the different tabs compiling literally each game that each combination of postcasters have done like this is uh this is great stuff here and hopefully we see a little more green in our future here for the wins uh, as the ottawa senators have uh not exactly been that great as the overall totals 201 postcast oh ross bumped you out there 201 <laughs> postcast total so we've been doing it for a while here and uh it's cool to see everything laid out like that so we appreciate that mark thank you for sure yeah it's fun it's fun to see for for everybody i think too so i wanted to do that mark how long have you been an ottawa senators fan for well as far as i can remember that was my that's on my only team i grew up playing hockey house league hero like like yourselves. Um, I was looking back actually, because I knew this is something that you guys like to ask. I was trying to find the first game I went to. Okay. Um, I remembered all I remembered was Nick Foligno scoring with like two seconds left to win. And I is found it against it. Against Columbus? It was October 27th, 2011 against the Panthers. Okay. The Sens won. And that was my first game. And it was so exciting. He scored with like four seconds left Ooh. to win. And, uh, yeah, ever since I've been a fan, the big run in 2016 was, like, peak peak Sens fan times for me. I was able to go to a couple games, some the FNUF overtime winner. Oh, nice. The, it's one of my favorites. The tourist, the tourist OT winner. Yep. Um, and I have a story from my parents went to the Pajot game. Okay. Um, but they left early. Oh, no. oh no. <laughs> well, they were, I know I I never let them live it down. They were down five three with like four minutes or something left, and they left because we had a they had a dinner to go to, and they're like, oh, they're not coming back. Four minutes left, wasn't looking good, and then they missed the the three more goals from Pajot. Oh, that's, that's one of the most iconic <laughs> Ottawa Senators I know. playoff moments ever. <laughs> they I was it. watching it on TV. I gave them a call. They're like, we left. We could hear that they scored, and then they wouldn't let us back in because they no. had already left the, the yeah. doors. Yeah. So, Damn. Yeah. They ended well, up I listening to it from the, from the lobby, saw it on the screen, but they wouldn't <laughs> let them go back in. That's so tough. Now, <laughs> rewinding to your first NHL game, I think it's pretty cool that the first Senators goal you ever saw was Daniel Alfredson. Nice. So I think oh, that's yeah. a nice little. And not yeah. only that, I mean, this game was wild. Colin Greening scores to put Ottawa ahead with two minutes and seven seconds left. Then the Panthers tie it up with the extra attacker with 48 seconds left. And then, as you mentioned, with less than four seconds remaining, Ottawa gets the win in regulation. So I could see how um, that being something that would galvanize you into becoming yeah. a big fan. Were you a fan of the team before you got to go to a game or when you went to that game, were you still just kind of learning the ropes of, of the Ottawa senators? I was kind of just like a, you know, casual fan. I, I'm, I was only nine at the time. So it was kind of like early for me, but yeah, I think that was my earliest memory was, I honestly, I don't remember the rest of the game, but it sounds like it was a good game. But yeah, I remember Felino scoring at the end. That was what stuck with me. And then uh, I'm not sure what year they played the Penguins in the first round, I think. I went to a game, but then they ended up getting blown out. So that was like my first memory of it. Um, and then ever since then, my dad buys a few tickets every year and we try to get to a few games. 
less and less in the last few years <laughs> because nobody really wants to go see them lose. But you know, catch some cheap cheap tickets with my friends every now and then. Nice. So I imagine Nick Foligno is one of the guys uh, that are some of your favorites early on in your Sens fandom. But let's keep the nostalgia going here, Mark. Uh, what other players did you really like growing up? I always liked Kyle Turris, Bobby Ryan, those guys. I have a Bobby Ryan jersey. Um, I remember I got the jersey for as a gift, and then I went to that game where he scored a, that beauty goal against the Kings. And I was so hyped. I had my – he, like, yep. went right through – I think it was Muzzin and, like, went right through him. And I, I was so happy I had my new Bobby Ryan jersey. And then – Nice. Yeah, so I'd say those two guys, it was awesome to see when he came back and scored that that hat trick when he yep. returned from uh, from being away for a while. So when I, Josh I'd say those Norris two guys. wanted the pass. He said he, – Josh Norris said he was <laughs> open and Bobby should have passed it. <laughs> On the MG net, yeah. 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 But yeah, those two guys now it's gotta be Brady. I in in one of my other fantasy leagues took him in my first first round pick. There you go. He's been great, you know, all the little things. I'm hoping he doesn't get too frustrated. I know like recently with how they've been going, it seems like he's he's losing <laughs> losing patience, but he's locked up, so yeah, I'm just hoping that, you know, with the first year of Michael Ann Lauer, again, we saw last night at the Sens Gala, just the kind of leadership <clears throat> that he's providing at the top. So I'm hopeful that there's not going to be uh, a revolt among the players and that they'll understand that the process of, of the sale took longer than anybody had hoped. And um, you hope that these players, especially the ones that you feel are part of the solution, and I think we're unanimous thinking that Brady Kachuk is a part of that, that they'll give him at least another year to – sort through things and have a full-time coach in play and everything else that goes along with building a team that belongs in the playoffs year in year out mark what would be your first order of business this summer to add to what the senators have and help them be a perennial playoff team it's tough because like on paper before this year i thought this is a good team obviously the goaltending not up to par but like you guys have been saying, I don't know what you can do. You're not going to – I don't think you can bite the bullet and buy out Corpus Allo now like, and have to live with that that money on the books for whatever, nine years, eight years, however Eight long more after be. this one. Yeah. If you bought it. I wouldn't – yeah. I don't think you can do that now. I think you got to maybe think about it with Forsberg to try to bring somebody else in. I don't think, like, any of the young guys are ready to be the backup yet, but, like, I think like you've been saying, bring in like a veteran backup that maybe could just be a a great great player for, for a year or two. Like we saw this year Stolars in in Florida or I know Pilsy, you like Wedgwood. You always like to Yeah. So like one somebody like that and then try to run Corpus Allo again. I think recently he's been playing well, but Chikrin seems like he's a little ready to go i don't know when he got here it was awesome like yeah. you know so emotional and wanted to be here but i think maybe moving him for a, a righty i don't know who that would be um like to to balance out the d a little i think up front though like you can have if you put norris on the wing you can have pinto stutzla as your one two centers and then maybe just like a a veteran winger in the bottom six I think like the core, there's no there's no need to make any any huge core changes right now. Okay, yeah, I I think I do believe in the potential of this core, and I feel like you, you got to give them a little time here. I know they've been around for a couple of years now, but everyone kind of overlooks the fact that how young all of these core guys are. So it might just take a little more time. And having said that. The coaching, I think, is going to be very important for this team's success. Mark, for their new head coach, maybe you don't have to tell me, uh, you know, specific guys you have in mind, but what what are some of the, like, qualities you'd be hoping for in a new head coach for the Ottawa Senators next season? Yeah, I think, like, they obviously liked having that freedom with, with Smith and having that, you know, they call him, like, the fun uncle and everything. But I think you need one of those 
not a new coach, a guy that's been around, knows what he's doing. I know, like, sometimes I get sick of, like, oh, yeah, it's the same cycle of whatever 50 guys that are always coaching. But I think it's time to bring one of those hard-nosed, you know, maybe not like a Sutter that, that like, that bad, but somebody like that, that that can be hard on them and get the most out of them. I don't know who's out there. Maybe I think Barube is out there. Yeah. Um, he would be a good one. Because I know, like, the number one guy I think is Gruden, who's never been an NHL coach. I'm kind of done with that. I want, you know, somebody who's who's been a head coach and had success before. So, yeah. somebody like that. Yeah, I think that's very fair. Now, right now, Jacques Martin's team will be for the rest of the year. Dave Poulin told us that he expects Jacques Martin to not only be a part of the head coaching search going forward in this summer, but also be kind of in the role that he was initially hired in, being an advisor and being somebody in upper management. So obviously there are still meaningful games left for the team from that standpoint. They want to impress a guy who's going to be here going forward in a management type role. What are you hoping to see as a fan over the last 10, 12 games right now where, yeah, playoffs are out of the picture, but what are you hoping to see for the rest of the season to be considered a success? I think just seeing Corpus Salo continue to play well, that's been good. Maybe he can string some good games together and carry that into next year. And then, you know, the young guy, Crookshank, has been good. Maybe bring back somebody up and scratch Kubalik. <laughs> I'm kind of I think he's done everybody's kind of done with him and obviously there's no meaning to these games so they're kind of comfortably in their four to five range at the end of the at the bottom of the league so I think just seeing again also the core guys keep being the ones who are producing I mean recently it's been those top six forwards Shabbat Chikrin on the back that have been getting all the points so even if you lose, I'm not totally against the tank. Um, but seeing those core guys keep going well, hopefully. I know it's the same story. Oh, yeah, do well and carry it into next year. But maybe especially with Corpus Allo, that could be that could be a good story. Well said, Mark, and we appreciate you jumping on as a Send Central citizen. Final question for me, and it's about the core. So as you mentioned, you know, that's who you're hoping to see continue on with having success. If you were going to get a jersey and they're sold out of Brady Kachuk jerseys, I know that's your guy. Whose jersey are you grabbing off the rack at the Send store? Are you going with the home, the away, and which player are you getting on the back? Um, at the Send store, it's a bit too expensive, but. <laughs> I grabbed a I grabbed a, a Timmy T-shirt last time I was there, so I'll probably be Stutzla. I like the the home, the black. If they had it in that one behind you, Pillsy, I have one of those blank. That's the best jersey. Oh yeah, I love opinion. it. Uh, but probably Stutzla. It's kind of crazy. Like he's the same age as me. Kind of think of that. Born in the same year as me, so it's like buying somebody whose jersey who could be like one of my buddies. But it's got to be him. Somebody who's locked up who's going to be here. Last time, all the jerseys I have are players that I bought, and then let's hear yeah, them. Let's yeah. hear the graveyard yeah. of jerseys. I love this. <laughs> well, I had a, a tourist, and then he got traded. A Bobby Ryan, and he left. Got a Bottom. Carlson, traded, um, and an Alfredson. So but I mean, these Alfredson. Are, these are classics. Still, though. They're all they're all legends still. Yes. Yep. Um, you're not like, like me Carlson, getting. A, yeah. You're not. You're not me getting a Jakob Silverberg jersey and gets traded forty <laughs> games later. No, no. I, I, I have a few blanks too. I usually go for the blanks and then maybe get somebody when they're retired. You can, you know, you're, they're not going to leave. But yeah, Carlson, I got like right before he ended up leaving. So, damn, that's yeah. that's tough. Yeah, but the, that's the thing. <laughs> All those guys had their moments and uh, shined in Ottawa. It's not. It's not like yeah, you went and bought a jersey and. Uh, that was it. Their story was over for the set. So that's Cowan. Yeah, exactly. So that's you have a good. Jared Cowan. I gave it to oh, Pillsy. Man. <laughs> yeah, I I needed an extra Sens jersey, so I think I bought it off you for what twenty bucks, Ross. No, I think you... two dollars. The number on the back. Oh yeah, two bucks because you won like a radio contest to win a oh, jersey. Hilarious. So you're like, I don't need this one anymore. So I was like, oh, no. So they asked... up with that Cowan jersey. Funny enough, Mark, because you mentioned you got a Carlson jersey. That's how I got mine. They did a um, they did a promo, and Craig Medaglia, the old social guy, actually messaged me. The other, he's like, "Was that you?" Um, yeah. It was a contest, and it said, "Tell us why you should get 
a brand new Sens jersey. I said, because mine's a Jared Cowan jersey. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's a good enough. Good and that won the say. contest. <laughs> I saw yeah. somebody I, I, the other day, unless it was their own last name, um, somebody walking downtown with a Scott Gomez. Nice. Well, it's a Go- no it was a Gomez Sens jersey. I'm assuming, I was hoping it's their own last name. I don't remember what the number was, so I couldn't check if that was his number. But yeah. Yeah. He played what, like ten games, zero points, and he was what? It was one of those weird situations where they brought him in after the the deadline, so he literally could yeah. only play with the Sens the rest <laughs> of the regular season, and that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the weirdest one I think I've seen. Yeah, but all time <laughs> vibes guy. That's a guy you bring into the room just to just to get the boys uh, feeling yeah. better and hear some good hockey stories from Gomer there. Uh, or a Mark Kovalev. Final... I've seen a Kovalev. Yeah, co- hey, I liked. <laughs> Unpopular opinion, but I liked Cole Lev in Ottawa. I thought he was at least entertaining. Maybe not always yeah. given the best effort, uh, no. <laughs> but he was entertaining. That's for sure. Uh, Mark, final question for me. Not really a question. I like to do this. Just open up the floor to you. Do you have questions for us? Is there something we didn't uh, touch on here? I, I hate it when we finish Send Central Citizen and then after they're like, oh, man, we didn't talk about this or whatever. So the floor is yours, sir. Not really, boys. It was great to come on and I'm glad we can make it work this week. I know we were trying last week and something came up for me, but yeah, great, great work. And I love listening every day. I'll give a quick shout out to my buddy who who's excited that I was coming on, Samarth. Nice. All right. I see you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it for me. That's awesome, yeah. Mark. We appreciate you. And as we led the show with, like, we're big stats guys. We don't always have the effort to do things, <laughs> but we love to see them. So we can't thank you enough for uh, hooking for sure. us up with that postcast statistic booklet. And not only that, but updating it as well. A true sense central citizen. We really appreciate you and hope to see you around the rink sometime. It's uh, great vibes, great cast. And look, when the team doesn't do too well, these are the, f- the favorite stories that we have to tell and it's how you became a fan and what you think this team needs to do to improve. So thanks so much for doing this and we look forward to doing it again down the road. For sure. Thanks guys. All right, Millsy. First thing first, want to give a shout out to Mark for joining us. Really fun conversation with him. And now the fun begins. Yes. It's NHL draft season coming soon. As according to the Daily Faceoffs, Frank Saravelli, the dates for the draft lottery are being narrowed down. It's a fluid situation, he says, but the expectation is it will be held on May 6th or 7th. So that whole thought of having it the first day of the playoffs, a pipe dream, Pelzi. We're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, that's uh, it's unfortunate that we have to watch teams go into the playoffs without our kind of hopes set on what number we're going to pick. But it does add a little more intrigue, Ross, and we can squeeze a little bit more out of the storyline uh, trying to have hypothetical ideas for, okay, if the Sens pick here, if they pick here, if they pick here. The good news is I've been uh, scrolling along Scott Wheeler's article in The Athletic of his uh, March prospect update, and... There's a lot of good players, regardless of where the Sens pick. I've I kind of have like four or five different avenues the Sens can take here. I'm obviously hoping for a right shot defenseman some way somehow, but there's a lot of talented players available in this in this year's like top 15, top 10 range. Well, that's just it. And Wheeler mentions that this ranking that he just put out is divided into six tiers. One all by itself, Macklin Celebrini. Then his next range is 2 to 12. That's a 10-player wow. range right now yep. where you feel like you're going to get a similar valued player. Then it goes 13 to 20. And then after that, it widely opens up after that. So Ottawa's second-round pick and the Boston first, I mean, you're probably going to get two similar quality players in that range, 21 to 42 he's got as his next range. And I'm sure this will narrow down as more viewings become available as more tape is watched. Once the season ends, a lot of these players are either going into their regional NCAA tournament games this weekend or OHL WHL, the major junior route. Those playoffs are all about to start as well. So I'm curious to see what's next Pilsy, but what we can do 
is pull up where we've got so far, and that is a top 10. Look, I, I'm leaving it so that I'm not just going back and crunching the numbers after every single update, but we've got like, or I'll do the top 12. How about that? Because cool. I mean, that that's where it seems like the uh, the number one fall off is here. And for uh, for a bit more of these rankings, I think I posted about the 14 or 15 on social media at Send Central on Twitter. But um, like number two is Artyom Levshunov, right shot defenseman out of Michigan State University. Yes. And his average ranking is 4.6. Like that's that's a huge drop off. And it goes 4.6, 4.9, 4.9, 5.3. 5 like it is as close as can be beyond number one in this year's draft class. So uh, we don't have to name out every single one here. People can watch on YouTube, the top 11 here and number 12. I think a lot of sense fans will be happy to see or interested to see in Carter. Yakemchuk as well. Who's ranked as high as four with Corey Pronman and as low as number 22 with elite prospects. So as you can see the range, it differs just between each player as well with each scout, what they think of them. But give me, you said you've got three or four guys pills. He like, who would you be happy to see become an Ottawa Senator so far? Obviously, subject to change here as we're still three months away from uh, Vegas NHL draft. Well, the interesting thing about uh, when you set these uh, charts and graphs up, Ross, is I always try to look for outliers. And right now, I'm seeing a common theme in the outlier here because you mentioned Lev Shunov is at a 4.6 average. Well, what's bringing that average down? is hockey prospects has him at 12. And then I'm thinking, okay, maybe they have other right-hand shot defensemen ahead of him. But then they got Zane Perrick, whose average is 8.7 on your list. They have him at 14. And then Carter Yukemchuk, the third, like, kind of consensus ranked third, uh, sorry, a right-hand shot defenseman. They got him at 16. So they have the three top right-hand defensemen at 12, 14, and 16. Whereas most people have them at like two five and like 10 or 12 range so it's interesting to see that hockey prospects is um quite lower on these righties than everyone else is and those are the three guys i'm mainly targeting ross i think you have like your your tier one right shot defenseman is lev shunov your tier two guy kind of the middling guy is going to be zane perrick and then if things don't go the Sens way and they fall a little bit more and those guys get uh, drafted quickly and they're still keen on a right shot defenseman, I think Kari Yakemchuk would be an interesting guy as well uh, a little bit later on there. So those three are the obvious ones I'm looking at, but it's tough, Ross, because you get so consumed by this, or at least I do, I should say, by this idea that, okay, the only place to get right shot defensemen is through the draft. you got to do that. But then you can't just take the position you need and leave other talent on the table. You got to take uh, best player available when you're a desperate team like the Ottawa Senators. So I'm so conflicted with what route I want the Sens to take here, but I feel like I would be most relieved if no matter what, no matter where they picked, they picked one of these three right shot defensemen. Let us know in the comments, how good does the forward have to be to pass on? Or or Ross, even I'll put this another way. How good would a left shot defenseman have to be for the Ottawa centers to take him? Cause I think that would be, that would be the move where all sense fans would kind of be like, uh, like that's the direction we're going. But if you get the best player available, you can't really be too upset with that. Cause then, but then you're looking at left shot defenseman kind of depth chart of, Sanderson, Shabbat, Chikrin, Clevin, and now another guy in that mix there. Like it's thing it's is when you draft when you're drafting this high though, Jake Sanderson would be the only guy in the conversation in terms of the talent level. And that's where it gets interesting. You don't think Tom, Thomas Shabbat? You think one of these guys would uh, surpass Shabbat? Shabbat's 27 years old as well, right? It's like yeah, fair. It's an interesting conversation, though, and one that will continue throughout the next couple of months leading up to the draft in Las Vegas, where we will be boots on the ground. But let us know so far which player is looking good as a future uh, Ottawa Senator. Ross, just to add, to get away from right shot defenseman, one guy that I've uh, kind of dipped my toes on and been watching a little bit closely here is Berkeley Catton. Uh, I, I believe he's Smooth. with Spokane. Yeah. Yeah. This guy puts up points. Uh, so that would be interesting. 
Yeah, a lot of smooth skating players. Uh, yep. They just posted this morning. Ivan Demidov, uh, the Russian forward, he just his team was down three goals late today, and he just rattled off a hat trick to tie it up. So wow. there's some talented players, no doubt. We'll be following yep. it every step of the way. Top 80 draft profiles coming after the Sens season winds down. But as we mentioned, the Sens season, still 12 games left. Lots of milestones to hit not a whole lot else but we'll have fun boots on the ground uh this saturday and the following tuesday if you are going to either game let us know we've got some people in the dms letting us know they want to grab a beer we're always up for that here we'll see cam our guy coming out to the game in winnipeg and uh we're looking forward to that and a whole lot more billsy any final thoughts from you on today's show Yes, final thoughts for me uh ross you are on vacation in arizona uh a holiday, if you will. Well, they're celebrating a holiday in Belleville as Stephen Halliday has officially arrived in Belleville and was on the ice practicing with them. I, it's crazy that a, a middle draft pick like Halliday would have kind of this much hype, but I'm so excited to see what he can do in the AHL. I think he's going to fit in nicely with that frame, the hockey IQ, and uh, hopefully he can be dishing it down in Belleville soon. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing where he ends up in terms of lineups. My final thought, and by the way, it looks great without the the bubble. The bubble's yep. gone. The fishbowl is gone. <laughs> Big visor guy, Stephen Halliday. If you want to learn more about Halliday too, go check out. We've got two, three interviews with him. Great guy. Great dude. Uh, my final thoughts is stick taps to Michael and Lauer. What a move last night at the great Sens job. red, black, uh, black, red, and gold gala not only were the ottawa senators as an organization able to raise more than six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars that will go to support children and youth in the national capital region but the owner himself has pledged from the senators community foundation one million dollars to rogers house and that is enormous what rogers house does i'm sure there's people listening who have had to use rogers house and look rogers house it's somewhere where you never want to be a pediatric palliative care hospice, family centered care. But it's one of those where if you need it, you understand just the importance of what they bring. So that when we know Roger Nielsen house, it's, it's been a long time part of the Ottawa senators family, but for him to then go another step and do a $1 million donation to Maison Papillon, which is, the equivalent of Rogers House, but serving the Udaway, the Quebec side, Gatineau, and its surrounding areas. I think it speaks volumes for Ann Lauer wanting to make this region into one community around the Ottawa Senators. So just want to give some stick taps to the owner and the Ann Lauer family. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you, you brought that up because this is the thing, Ross, is Michael Ann Lauer, it just, like he gets it. Sure, the on ice product, there's a lot of work to do, but he wasn't necessarily handed uh, the easy platter to deal with. But first ring of honor decision he makes, celebrating an employee, Dr. Chow. Love it. That's great for the overall kind of morale of not just the hockey team, but the business and the foundation of the Ottawa Centers. And then the charitable work of the last owner, not so great near the end of things. A little bit of a rocky patch there. So Mike Landlauer comes in and cleans it up. And not only uh, $1 million to Rogers House, but then the uh, Frank Phone community also receiving the exact same amount. So that's what you love to see. And he's building this community. That's what you want from a franchise owner. And he's proving that he's a leader. And he's trying to have a best-in-class organization. Tomorrow. Game day preview, Ottawa Senators taking on the Buffalo Sabres. Which season is more disappointing? What a fun conversation. We'll have that tomorrow. For today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, everyone. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators Podcast. Your team every day.